Hi everybody, Lee Varis here, bringing you Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. Uh, I'm here uh, hunkered down trying to avoid the COVID-19, and uh, so I expect I'm going to be spending more time in front of the computer, and uh, that means that you're likely to see a little bit more of me here. So uh, today's Photoshop rant is going to be a little bit different. Usually, uh, usually I have a, a rant that's about one technique or one topic. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at a whole project that, with, with a range of techniques. And uh, we're going to look at uh, an image that uh, uh, we set up for our participants on the last Venice photo tour that we did in Carnival. And uh, so we've got a kind of an interesting image to look at here. So uh, let's take a look. Um, the techniques that I'm going to be covering, uh, a whole range of techniques, uh, starting with blending multiple layers together the easy way using a smart object with stack mode. I'll show how to adjust the background separately from the subject. I'll look at quick mask mode as a way to visualize the edge softness of a mask. And I'll cover a simple technique for edge burning with gradients. Uh, I'll demonstrate how to use a curve by the numbers to adjust white to neutral. And I'll show how to duplicate a good element to replace a bad element. So let's get started. OK, so um, this is the concept that I was going for. Uh, the idea here, I had, uh, I had some sparklers. And uh, once we had set up uh, the composition in front of the uh, St. Mark's uh, Basilica here with our costumers, uh, the idea was I'd run back and forth with these sparklers during long exposures to paint in uh, the light trails and then uh, at blend several exposures together to get uh, this, this sort of chaotic electricity behind, uh, behind them. And this was the first version that I did. Uh, so after doing this, I decided that that was just entirely too much uh, sparklers. So uh, we, uh, we did uh, this one. Okay, and uh, this one's fewer, uh, it's blending fewer sparklers into the shot, and it's also going for a little bit darker rendering in the sky, and uh, a little more subdued lighting in the basilica behind them to help them pop out. Um, and what I'm going to do now is, is go through the whole process. Uh, so let's go back here to our, uh, our, uh, uh we'll go to the grid and I just want to get the JPEGs here. Um, because that's, that's what I worked with. I worked with the JPEGs from the GFX, uh, using the Velvia, uh, picture style or the uh, Velvelia sim film simulation and I got a certain kind of exaggerated colors that uh, I wanted to go and uh, so you can see a couple of these where the front light didn't go off and I'm, I'm just painting the sparklers in behind them. Uh, I had six seconds. I didn't quite make it all the way across and so we had to do several of these uh, to blend uh, these exposures together. Um, you can see various versions. I, I, I really had quite a workout here. And then we had a couple with just the, the white lights. I didn't like any of these ones with the um, uh, umbrella or the parasol on the ground. So we went back to this. Uh, we tried a little lens flare here. I don't think any of that really helped uh, very much. And then at this point, it's just started getting too light in the sky. Um, so what I... The, the way that I blend all these together uh, takes advantage of a special feature in Photoshop and smart objects where we can, we can select multiple uh, layers, turn them into a smart object, and then use something called stacking. So I've, I've already highlighted the, uh, the layers that I want to work with here. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to select the multiple layers that I want to use. And uh, I, I'm going to use another version of this, uh, this layer or this image as a layer on top because they're, the, the figures are lit from the front. Um, okay, so I've got 
basically four of these selected and uh, I'm going to um, go photo edit in and I'm going to open them as layers in Photoshop okay so we just open as layers in Photoshop and uh, once it it starts calculating and we'll, we'll go into Photoshop uh, and you'll see the layers appear I'm still loading here we go so there's four layers uh, this was shot on a tripod so everything should be pretty much you know except for the figures and the uh, the sparkler trails everything should be pretty much lined up you can kind of see the light changed a bit here uh, when the street lights went out and that's our, our bottom layer there so I don't need to auto align the layers typically if you if you're trying to uh, line up things it's better to shoot them on a tripod if you can't do that and you have to shoot handled you'd have to select all of these and then come over here to auto align layers we're going to skip that part because i think everything's pretty much aligned so now that i have these all highlighted here i'm going to go up to my layer menu smart objects and convert to a smart object so then now this creates what looks like one layer but all four of those layers are embedded in it and once we get that we can come back up here to the layer menu and under smart objects now uh, now that we have the smart object created from multiple layers we have this option here called stack mode now, most of the time in, uh, in the various tutorials you can find online, when they when they talk to stack when they talk about stack mode, they they're mostly illustrating how you can move people from uh, architecture shots where they're walking and you take multiple shots and then you use something like a median uh, to make uh, all the people that were displaced in space in different positions you can make them disappear. Uh, but in this case, I want all of the sparkler trails to show up. So I'm going to use a stack mode called Maximum. So what Maximum does, and I'll just select it here, what Maximum does is it takes and compares all of those four layers and then keeps the brightest pixels. So it's, it's keeping all of the uh, kind of electric uh, sparkler trails here and um, and blending them all together so I didn't really have to do any work now the figures here are also you can kind of see they're all blended together and uh, they're blurry and they're not in the same position but it's always choosing the brightest pixel so uh, it kind of blends them all together now that for that reason uh, I, I know that I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to put another layer on top with the clean figures to get this all to work. So I have that over here. I've masked these figures out and I, you know, you just use regular kind of masking techniques. And I didn't have to be all that careful, but I, I wanted to have, a, you know, uh, a reasonable edge here because we want this part to be the only thing that's sharp on top of uh, the, the sparkler trails. So I'm going to pull this in and you can kind of see this is the uh, this is the layer mask and I, I, I use the uh, uh, um, select and mask dialog and I, I didn't try to absolutely totally clean this up because it's basically going on top of itself so I don't have to be all that careful with the masking. Uh, but I did want to get a reasonable uh, tight mask uh, to the figures and you can kind of see there's a, plenty of areas where they move during the exposure and so there's some blur and we'll be we'll be dealing with that when we blend this in on top of, of uh, the main picture so the idea here is I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take this and um, we will use the move tool and I'm going to drag this on top of this document here, and it will place these figures in registration. Now, the trick to this is I get the Move tool, and I click somewhere inside this window, but hold down the Shift key. 
Okay, so I take holding, keeping the shift key held down, I lift this up to the tab at the top here. That document comes forward, and I still have my finger on the mouse now. I'm dragging with my finger still on the shift key. I'm going to drop it on top, and you'll notice how it drops in, and it's in perfect registration. Um, so uh, that's what the shift key gives you. So it drops it totally centers it over the uh, other image. And since they're all the same dimension, uh, it, uh, it, it registers it, so it's perfectly registered. Okay, so now, now we're looking at this, and, and uh, you can kind of see it's covering up most but not all of uh, the background. And I'm going to want, uh, I'm going to want to, cover up everything. So I, I'll select my layer mask here. I'll get my brush tool and I'm going to paint with white and I'm going to paint over the extra parts of the figures that I, I don't want to see. Right. So I'm going to paint over this and eliminate uh, that sort of little bit of the headdress that was showing up from uh, uh, another shot. Right. So you can kind of see that eliminates these these out of position elements that are in there from uh, the other uh, images that were blend together in uh, in uh, uh, in the stack mode, and I can I can just brush because this image is uh, already masked out. I can mask in the parts of the background here that cover up the things that I don't want to see, and you know it gets kind of chaotic up in here. Uh, I don't mind that so much. I'm going to just double check and see. For the most part, that's covered. I don't mind seeing a little extra, you know, the feathers kind of blending through here. It doesn't bother me. Um, and I also want to make sure that I don't cover up too much of the sparklers that are blended in. See, so because they come in nicely behind this, but then I want to eliminate this extra, you know, piece of, the, of his staff here. Um, and extra pieces of his coat that are out of position, out of position pieces of the staff. I'm just going to go ahead and hide that with this the, the foreground layer here. Now I brightened up um, I brightened up this foreground image that's on top just so that the figures would be nicely exposed in this. Um, so there, there are parts of the background here that are a little bit brighter that I'm going to have to deal with uh, later on. I want those to kind of knock back. So um, now my goal is to help them separate from this rather chaotic background. And uh, we have everything sort of very warm, uh, you know, very warm tones. I know that I want to bring uh, a darker sky in over this, the top of this. Um, and uh, so maybe I will do that next. Let me go find uh, one that I wanted to use. So I'll go back to Lightroom here. And I know that my earlier exposures up here uh, this one, I think, uh, this one right here has the darkest sky. So I'm going to bring that in. So just open that up. And uh, because I don't want to create another bitmap image in, in next to this raw file in Lightroom, I'm going to open it as a smart object. This is actually one of the layers, right? Uh, but I've blended those layers together to create... Uh, to create the uh, blend of the sparkler trails. So this one is just one of those layers, but I want to use this top piece. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, I, since I don't need to access the raw file again, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image first. And we're going to do that same trick. I'm going to drag it on top of my composite image, holding down the shift key, dragging up to the tab, dragging down and letting go with my mouse finger, and it drops on top. Now, uh, I'm really only interested in the sky part, which is nice and dark, and it keeps the, uh, the cathedral 
uh, nicely isolated against that dark sky. So I'm going to hide it first with a black layer mask. So I'll hold down the Option or Alt key, click on the layer mask icon, I get a black layer mask. And now I'm going to put a gradient in here um, that's going to reveal uh, the top portion of this. So I have selected here, uh, I've got white in my foreground, I've selected the uh, foreground to transparent option here for the gradient. And I'm going to use the gradient tool to paint in a gradient. I start and drag and that's where the gradient will end. And I'm trying to keep it somewhat perpendicular to the, the, the lines of the architecture here so I can bring in uh, that, that top. Now there's a little bit of like kind of a horizon glow here. I don't mind that. Uh, but Perhaps I'll, I'll just brush that in uh, with, uh, with a paintbrush here just to kind of keep that sky consistent. Okay. All right. And I think I'm going to crop this parsh portion out. So I'm going to leave it alone. I got a little bit of kind of cloudy look to this. And I think that that um, also helps to kind of uh, keep your eye from wandering up to that bright blue thing. It's also somewhat desaturated in the blue up here. But the, the cathedral's nice and bright, and uh, everything's still working out just fine. I'm going to bring this down below my figures uh, because I'm going to also start maybe darkening everything except the, the uh, sparklers back here underneath the figures. So that means I'm going to get uh, a curves adjustment. And uh, since the sparklers are the brightest thing, and they're, they're kind of up here, they're pegged in at, at white, so I'm going to leave that endpoint up here, but I'm going to start darkening the background image. And you can kind of see it's darkening everything behind the figures. And um, I'm kind of liking that. I'm thinking, you know, maybe I can cool off the color a little bit here. So let's let's start uh, let's start by taking a little red out, and uh, you know I can kind of uh, you know up here it's really high in the curve, but back here I can take out some of that red, which is going to cool it off right behind these figures. So I uh, you know I have the little hand tool here. I move into the image and I can kind of see where these tones and colors live, and this kind of tone is right in the middle there. I'm going to click and pull it down. And it's going to take some red out. So everything's getting a little bit greener. Uh, we can also take a little bit of green out. Same sort of thing. You know, maybe the green, uh, I'll just pick an area in the middle of the curve here and just pull out a little bit of green. So everything's gotten uh, a little cooler, a little less saturated, uh, and uh, yet the sparklers, because those live way up in here, those really aren't being affected very much. So I'll take out a little more green and then maybe take out just a little more red. Right. So that helps all this in the background to, to recede a little bit, but it's keeping my sparklers nice and bright. So you see, see how that works? It's sort of knocking that back. So now uh, my foreground figures are, are uh, coming in a little stronger. All right, so what else do I need to do here? Um, I'm thinking that I might want to, you know, darken uh, a little more around them. Uh, now some of, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's turn off everything underneath. I've added in pieces of the background to cover up parts and things that I don't want showing back there. And I'm going to want to darken these things down. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do, and I'm, I have little areas of the pavement back here, that, that's all stuff that I'm going to want to darken down. So it looks like in order to make uh, this sort of halo of darkness around them, See how there's a kind of a halo of lightness here? I want to turn that into a halo of darkness. So um, what I'm going to need to do is um, create a curve adjustment. And I'm going to 
start by placing uh, uh, the mask from this top layer. I'm going to create an inversion, an inverted version of this uh, for the curve adjustment that's going to darken in a kind of a halo around them. Okay, so I'm going to load this as a selection, and then I'm going to get a curve. Okay. And um, this curve, I'm going to invert the layer mask. So now that I have the layer mask thumbnail selected here, I can go Command or Control I and invert it. So now the center part of the uh, image where the figures are is masked. And I can further darken the background. Now you'll, you'll notice that I'm really going to go pretty aggressively here because what I want to do is create just sort of a little bit of a subtle shadow around them. Now you'll notice that some, some parts didn't darken and that's because the layer mask is hiding that part of the background. So let's fix that now. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm uh, just going to use a brush uh, and, and brush with white uh, because this area right here now is black in the layer mask and I want I, I'm going to show it to you see this whole area is sort of black here and I'm going to want to darken that down uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the edge of the figure here uh, so I'm going to um, paint with white now let's uh, get my brush size a little bit smaller I'm going to use a very soft edge brush, but I'm going to make the brush a bit smaller here. And uh, I'm going to want to brush this down so that we create that halo effect. And uh, in here, where it's getting close to the edge, uh, and it's going to possibly start eating into the, the darker mask there, I'm going to use the dodge tool and just dodge back. Because once it, gets, it bumps into something black, it's going to not dodge anymore right so I can kind of refine the mask this way this way I get I can get in really tight now over here uh, it's already pretty black so now I'm just gonna look in uh, with the figure in place so I'll hit the alt or uh, option key on that thumbnail again because I want to solo it okay now I'm bringing it back and I can see you know, just maybe uh, some portions that I want to continue to darken, but I don't want to go over the purse, right? Um, okay, so there's that. There was another area over here. Uh, there's this area that also needs to be dark. So uh, I'm going to uh, paint. Whoop, I got the dodge. <laughs> I'm going to paint with the paintbrush here over this area. To darken it in but I'm staying away from the figure All right so I want to create this this dark area right behind them now this is it's like deliberately super dark um, because I'm going to create just a sort of a little bit of an edge shadow to help separate them from um, the background and I think those are my main areas of uh, concern here. So let me let me zoom out, see if there's any more. Oh yeah, this one over here. Let's let's take a look at that. So we'll, we'll make sure we paint that out. And let's zoom out again. Uh, I'm going to solo this layer just to see where the, the layer mask is, see if I missed anything. Um, you know, I got that, I got that, I got that. Uh, I think, oh yeah, there's this piece up here. So let's, uh, let's zoom in up there. And again, I'm painting with white in there to get that darkening effect to come in above the top of her head here. All right. Now, 
this is like making everything ridiculously dark back there. I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I want to have a, a little bit of light, but I want to have just a soft halo of darkness around them and kind of mostly directly behind them. So what I've got going on here uh, is um, the layer mask is white everywhere outside of the figure. And so it's darkening everything down. Uh, and I want to now confine it to inside the figure. So um, what I'm going to do <laughs> in order to do this effectively, and I because I'm lazy, I'm going to load this selection from this mask, which is a tighter selection. So I hold down the command or control key and click on that layer mask thumbnail. That gets me uh, this um, selection. I'm going to modify the selection. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to expand it by, uh, I'm going to do like 50 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to do even more. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to expand it. Uh, we'll expand it by, uh, you know, like 75 more pixels. Okay. So now I'm going to invert that selection. So right now, of course, this everything inside, if I get a, a, a selection tool, you can kind of see this. As I move the cursor inside the selection, you can see it turns it changes to indicate uh, the selection, right? The inside, this is selected, that is not selected. I want the opposite. I want this outside to be selected. So I'm going to uh, inverse the selection, okay? So now the whole outside, you can see the cursor now has changed and the inside's not selected. This is the portion that I want to protect. I want that to be uh, the sort of light halo that's around the figure here. And uh, I'm, so I'm going to paint in with black around it. But first, I'm going to feather that selection. But the way I'm going to do it, instead of just going select and modify and feather, I, I need to visualize how blurred that selection is. So I'm going to, going to go to Quick Mask, and you can do that by clicking in this little icon here or hitting the Q key. So I'm going to go to the uh, Quick Mask, and now I want to blur this so just enough so that it gets close to the edge of the figure. See, I expanded it, right? So it's way outside, and I want to blur it now. And I can see little bits here that I want to I'm going to cover that up. So I'm going to paint in the Quick Mask to cover up these what I consider little errors in, in the, the mask. And um, now we're going to run a filter. So when we're in quick mask mode, uh, the selection is actually a bitmap, and I can use the Gaussian blur filter to create my feathering effect. Right? So I'm going to we'll give this a nice uh, hefty blur, you know, something like that. So I'm going to get a nice soft edge. Okay, now we go out of quick mask mode and we select the thumbnail for the layer mask here. So what I want to do is this area that the outside area that's selected, I want that to delete to black. So I have black in my background and if I just uh, hit the backspace or delete key, it deletes it and you can kind of see now that um, if I solo the layer mask thumbnail, what I've got is this kind of halo around uh, the figures. Now let me drop that selection. I'm going to deselect it and go in and repair some of these little errors, which I can do in this case uh, using the dodge tool. Again, the dodge tool there just kind of helps prevent me from coming into uh, the figure too much, right? Um, into the, the black areas that represent the selected figure. All right, so I can just kind of, and I have, I have a very soft edge brush here. Um, I'm not too worried about it looking, it looks like it has a hard edge here. It's, it's not, not going to be that big of a problem. Um, 
All right, let's zoom out. And now that I've got that, we will unsolo the mask again to kind of see where we're at with that. So you can see right behind them now, I've created a kind of a soft shadow that helps to further separate them from the background without totally darking down uh, the cathedral behind them. Because I want that's a that's an important part of this picture. It gives a sense of space, and I don't want it to look too dark. Uh, however, I might uh, might darken it just a little bit here. I'm going to darken the the lighter part of this just a little bit, right? And kind of soften the contrast a little bit. And that you can kind of see as it's this part of the curve is a little flatter, so it's a little softer. If I move the cursor in the image, you can kind of see where that upper part's living in that little bowed section of the curve, and it's it's been darkened. But these these highlights are way up at the top, really close to the end point, because they're almost white, and so uh, they don't get a, a affected as much by this curve. Okay, the only, um, eh, you know, I'm kind of... I'm kind of liking this right now. The only thing I want to do is maybe darken down this area uh, a little bit. So I'm going to create uh, another uh, layer at the top here uh, that's going to be our sort of edge shadow for the foreground here. And we'll put that in uh, multiply mode. Uh, and I'm going to use a gradient. This time I'm going to use black as my foreground foreground to transparent here and uh, we will just paint that gradient in like that that didn't work exactly the way I wanted it so I'm going to paint it a little less steep of an angle there we go okay now that's in multiply mode I'm just going to reduce the opacity of that because I don't want to turn it to black but I do want to darken this edge so that it keeps you away from uh, uh, the edge of the picture because it's sort of a subtle vignetting effect, right? And I can do a little bit of the same thing over here. Okay, so that's uh, that's now pretty much looking like it's the way I like it. They're, they're nicely uh, highlighted. I may decide here, let's just put uh, an additional curve for them just to brighten them up a little bit. So we'll make another curve up here. And uh, this curve I'm going to clip to the figures because they're already nicely masked. And um, what we're going to do is uh, kind of establish a white point, a black point. So I think probably my brightest thing is right there. So, um, and, and because I'm not certain where the darkest thing in this is, or the brightest thing, I'm going to uh, make a temporary threshold adjustment here. We'll clip that as well, because I'm really only interested in them. And uh, we'll find the brightest thing is going to be that handkerchief, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right in there. Okay, so I'm going to place a fixed sampler where that handkerchief is, and move this down to the darkest thing which is part of their clothing right there now we throw that away and i'm going to return to the the curve here so what i want for my white point i want my white point to be neutral it's almost neutral the blue is a little bit higher um, i'm going to leave that alone it's it's almost like a specular highlight i'm going to look at this belt here because I'm going to make that, I'm going to make it brighter and uh, more neutral. So I'm not going to go as far as um, 244, but we can go. Let's let's aim for like 230. Uh, I want this point to be brighter. I'm going to mask it, and uh, so we're going to aim for uh, 245. Let's let's make that red 245. So. There's 245. Let's make the green 245. So 
So I got 245, 245, 244, uh, close enough. And uh, you can see now that it, it's sort of, we're losing detail in the, uh, in the red coat. It's making the, the whites look nicer, and it's probably making their masks look a little brighter, taking the green out of it, which is good, but I don't want to use it everywhere over the red. So I'm going to invert the layer mask. So now that mask is black, and now we can paint with white over the area that I want to brighten up, which is this belt here. So I'm brighten up that belt, maybe brighten up some of these other things here. The mask, the neck. So these white areas, which have gotten kind of a cool color cast, right? I'm going to brighten them up with this mask, but I'm not going to paint over the red areas, which are already uh, getting sort of clipped in the red channel. So we don't want to we don't want to brighten those up any more than they already are. However, we can uh, we can brighten up the jewelry here. Just kind of hit these things a little bit. Okay, so let's just toggle this on and off, see what that's done. It's helped to brighten them up. I can brighten this up. So my goal here is really uh, to, to create as much contrast or brightness relative to the background as I can. Because the background right behind them certainly is a little bit darker. And the only thing really bright are these um, sprinkler trails. We'll break them brighten up a little bit of that headdress there because it's kind of dark in this area. Okay. So we have our black points already neutral. I'm not going to worry about it. Our, our whitest thing is close to paper white, uh, but I brightened up all the other whites. So that's my goal here. And uh, just checking, it's starting to look pretty cool. Um, all right, I think that's probably enough for now. Oh, oh one last thing. I, I did notice this when I when I zoomed in earlier. Uh, I'm not seeing her eye here. So um, I'm going to need to get that a, a copy of this eye into uh, above, uh, in, a, in a layer above. I'm going to duplicate this, this eye right here and put it over here, flip it, and put it over there. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to, um, uh, let's see, I can uh, make a selection. That doesn't have to be really precise here. I'm going to just select around this eye. And we're going to Command J it, or Control J, jump it into a new layer. OK, now this layer, I want to also uh, get that to clip. So I'm holding down the option or alt and clicking in between uh, so that that sits inside of the mask of this and it also is controlled by that, um, that curve on top, which is brightening it. But now I can get the move tool and I can move this eye over here. And in fact, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna flip it. I'm just going to mask it so that it fits in place. It's not too bad, but let's let's mask it. So I put a layer mask on there by clicking on that layer mask icon, and now I'm going to paint with black around the edges. Make that brush a little bit smaller here. Nice soft edge brush, and just kind of paint it so that it it kind of blends in and it doesn't become obvious that it's an exact duplicate of that. So because it would be in a little more shadow. Uh, based on the direction of the light hitting, you can see the shadow should fall on this inside edge of the mask, whereas over here, she's more lit. Uh, but it's the same eye because I wasn't getting that eye to show up. It was too much in, in shadow. 
and with these costumers, it's kind of important to get these eyes to show up. Um, all right, so there we are, and I think it's starting to look uh, like a finished piece. And uh, I'm sure this looks completely different than the previous two that I did. So let's uh, let's save it. And uh, I'm going to go to my uh, my work in progress folder here, and I think. Uh, I think those are, let's see, comp three, comp two. So we'll call this uh, comp four. Okay, there we go, saving it. And we will return to Lightroom here and take a look. As soon as it's finished saving. And there we go. And let's uh, let's see if I can find uh, the the several versions now. So we've got that. Uh, this was one of the previous versions, and there's comp three, and uh, comp two, comp four. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're we're good. All right. So those are the, my my different versions. Let's take a look at them side by side. So you can see. You know, I this was a previous version. I, I darkened this guy down. I think I, I darkened the background just a little bit more. Uh, and uh, now I just have to decide if I like this version or that version. And the first version has way too many uh, sparkler trails. Uh, but that hopefully you can see how I was able to blend these things together um, using the stacking mode in the smart object and how all those little tricks with the sequence of the layers and how I manipulated the, the curve to create uh, darkness and lightness in areas of interest uh, and how all that, that worked out. So uh, hopefully that was useful and uh, do join us in Venice next year. Okay, so to review, we saw how easy it is to blend layers together by turning them into a smart object and use stack mode maximum to blend the lightest pixels into a composite image. We learned how to sequence the layers and adjustment layers to control tone and maximize the separation of the subject from the background. We looked at leveraging existing masks when building new ones and using quick mask mode to visualize edge mask softness. We also saw how to use curves to neutralize a white value by the numbers. We also saw how to duplicate the good eye to hide the bad eye in the mask. If you'd like to see, uh, or if you'd like to create images like this and participate in our next Venice Carnival adventure, you can sign up on our website, bobbyandleesphotoadventures.com. All of our upcoming photo tours are listed under the photo tours menu. And Venice Carnival 2021 is February 9th through 14th. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. If you have any questions, or if you'd like to see more detail about any of the techniques I touched on in this project, please let me know in the comments below. You can also find more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You might consider following me on Instagram. I have two books in print, available on Amazon and Kindle, as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at courses.veris.com. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.